The doctor is in. Welcome back, guys. It's your pal, Dr. Sal, again. And today, we are going to take a look at Ventolin, also known as salbutamol. This is one of the class of medications called a beta agonist. They're basically stimulants. They prepare your body for fight or flight. And in doing so, to get you ready or prepared for something that's going to take a lot of uh, quick exertion, like running away from a cheetah, climbing up a rock face, whatever. Um, as part of that response, you'll get things like your heart increasing in rate, your blood pressure going up, your vision getting more acute. And a lucky side effect for us is you'll also get dilation of the airways, relaxation of the muscle in the airways to prepare you for bigger gasp and to be able to capture more oxygen from your environment. So it's almost like you're revving your whole system up in preparation for, for something, tackling some task as Herculean. So we can make use of that effect through these uh, beta agonists, through an inhaled version, so that we don't have to rev your entire body up. We're just trying to rev up your lungs to reduce your asthma attack, which is narrowing of the airways because of something that the body perceives it as an insult. So typically it comes in, um, like since I was a kid, it's always been in a blue, um, container, plastic container. Uh, we also call these pumps. Um, in your area, it might not be blue, but for me, it's always been color-coded as, uh, as a blue puffer. Okay, so let's look at the potential side effects of this life-saving inhaler. Now, a typical dosing for Ventolin or Salbutamol is 100 micrograms, two inhalations up to four times a day if required for relief of an asthma attack. Now in this study, uh, this was done on N was 202 patients and this study was run for three months. So by far the most common side effect in 10% of utilizers was throat irritation. Now uh, what I've done is I'm also going to put on this arm here placebo effects because sometimes it's hard to tell what side effect was actually a consequence of a therapy and how much of it was just in the head or due to, to some other extraneous circumstance. So in the placebo arm of the um, study, there were 6% of people that also complained of throat irritation. Now remind, remembering that with asthma, um, you may not be restricted in symptoms just to asthma. If you tend to be allergic in general, you probably also suffer with stuff like um, eczema, you probably could have sinus issues, nasal issues, rhinitis, etc. So that's why you would, you might see this, um, 6% of people here on something that's not therapeutic, still complaining of throat irritation. Uh, people like me with asthma in general tend to be allergic and it doesn't only necessarily manifest through the lungs. Uh, this one here was a little surprising viral infections. Uh, I couldn't quite understand what that was about, except perhaps that because our lungs tend to be inflamed and wet to begin with, it makes us more susceptible to infections. Um, in the placebo arm, there were also 4%. So to me, the true incidence here would be roughly 4% and here 3%. And then upper respiratory infect, uh, not inflammation was in... 5% uh, of people, and also 5% in the placebo arm, so basically zero. That was also a little surprising to me because you would think that the aerosol itself might be irritating to some people's airways, but apparently not so. Uh, cough was seen in 5% of users and 2% on placebo, so about 3%. And this one was a little surprising um, musculoskeletal pain. The only thing I could explain about that is maybe the effort of coughing was causing some people to have, I don't know, maybe chest wall soreness, which is not implausible. But uh, I didn't see an actual detailed explanation of this musculoskeletal pain. And for me personally, having used uh, salbutamol most of my life, I've never experienced that myself. But anyway, in their study, they quoted it's 5% and in the placebo arm, 2%, so about 3% of people. So overall, you could see that it's a relatively very well tolerated um, medication. Now, a few little uh, pointers or caveats or pearls of wisdom. Uh, one, even though it wasn't documented in the 
side effect profile, I personally have seen in myself and others um, a lot of stimulatory side effects. So like your heart racing, uh, feeling sweaty, um, hands shaking or trembling. And this is typically after hitting the pump hard. So you have a bad asthma attack and you, you pump it a few times and inhale, you notice these symptoms. Well, if you remember at the beginning, I told you it's a beta agonist. So it is designed to prepare you for fight or flight response or your adrenergic um, boxing reflex. So that's not surprising that as a consequence, you're going to get some of these spin-off effects because not all of it stays in the lungs. Some of it will be absorbed systemically and cause systemic effects. So if you take enough of it, you can notice those, um, those symptoms, but they're, they're always, um, temporary short lived. And once the puffer started to dial itself back down, um, as it wears off, these symptoms disappear with it. The second thing is if you have to be hitting your pump often, several times a day, multiple shots per day, um, the beta agonists are notorious for something called tachyphylaxis, which means that as you keep taking it, you get less and less benefit from it. So on day one of a week, you're taking it, say, four times per day, you get really good relief. By the end of the week, you're taking it the same number of times, but you're still wheezing and feeling tight and congested. That's because of this. So that takes us on to another topic, which is if you're noticing that you're developing tachyphylaxis, that means you actually should be on a preventative inhaler, not just a rescue one. So a preventative would be stuff like a uh, flow vent, for example, or pulmicort. And then there's also tablets like uh, Singular, which we'll talk about in another video. So just two little pieces of advice, um, things to notice about the Ventolin. But overall, it's a very useful uh, tool in our arsenal against um, asthma attacks. And actually, I, I remember having a really bad attack one, one time um, uh, outside of Paris in a restaurant where you're still allowed to smoke on the inside. And I can tell you it was life-saving when I got my puffer. It was the most beautiful thing I'd seen. I had to go from the hotel by a taxi back to the, sorry, from the restaurant to the hotel because I stupidly didn't have it on me. And I can tell you it was the most beautiful thing I ever saw once I got it. So that's probably the third thing actually I should recommend for you is that if you have significant asthma, you should always have one of these uh, airway openers like Ventolin on your person or in your car or somewhere that's accessible. You should never be out of it. At the time when the, that attack uh, occurred to me, I hadn't had an attack for months. So I was feeling comfortable enough that I just left it in, in my bag in the hotel. That was a mistake. So Ventolin can be life-saving. So you should always have access to it if, you're, um, if you have significant asthma attacks. All right, folks. So thanks so much for uh, watching. And uh, I'll be back again soon with some more information on something, some other topic that would be useful to you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now. If you found this video helpful, support us by sharing it with all of your friends. And throw us a like below. You're a star. Cheers and cheerio.